पासवर्ड हो गया हां ये भी कहानी मैम ऑलरेडी लाइव इज टू मी Good evening friends I am Dr Ajay Shah and we are bringing you this another great great evening facebook live today i have a great guest a couple so we'll talk about them in a minute let me give you some update on our page we have now crossed 57000 followers pretty much all over from the world about 20000 from united states and 15000 from india so from all over the world we are bringing you this every day five to six posts on various health aspect we also have expanded our pillars now into how to just uh, not be healthy but how to be successful so please uh, join our movement i always ask you i always request you to invite 25 friends whenever you get chance to join our movement we are also uh, posting now healthy recipes actually matter of fact uh, cooking live demonstration my wife matter of fact today made a healthy vegetable dumpling so please reach out to that so let's uh, talk about today's guest i belong to a a lifestyle physician group and we have two power couple dr kaushik reddy and dr angela reddy and the other power couple is dr arjun rayapuri and dr shobha rayapuri but the couple with the biggest smile are the dr rayapuri so i can even see their smile right now you all can see it <laughs> really did not take it personally but this is the truth you all we should smile more like them but they will tell us the secret why they keep smiling so much bigger than all of us so, so let's uh, Let's invite uh, Dr. Arjun Rayapuri and Dr. Shobha Rayapuri. Welcome. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Ajay. It's such a pleasure to be here, and thank you for doing this. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. It's uh, it's uh, such a, an honor to be in conversation with you. You're doing such an amazing work. Uh, so we're okay. so glad to be on this journey with you. <laughs> Yeah, okay, your you. work is so inspiring, Dr. Ajay. And oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not enough said, but thank you okay. for of doing. Of course, yeah. Thank you. So, please tell us where do you live and what type of medical practice you both have. So we live uh, in uh, Newfoundland, Canada. It's a beautiful uh, part of Canada. It's northeast Canada. We're in a small uh, town called uh, Buren. and our town has doesn't have traffic lights uh but it's uh, uh you know uh, full of uh, peace and uh, beauty and lots of uh, friendly people uh and we uh, both work as a uh, lifestyle medicine uh, doctors that's one aspect the other aspect is uh, i'm a general surgeon in uh, buren peninsula hospital I'm also uh, assistant professor of surgery at uh, Memorial University uh, in the Department of Surgery. So one aspect of my work is uh, uh, doing uh, surgery, and uh, other aspect is uh, teaching people how to use uh, food as medicine so that they stay away from my surgical knife. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, and how about you, Doctor Sobhara Puri? Yes, yeah, so I would add one thing about this place. So I didn't know where even this case existed on the map. Forget about knowing <laughs> where Newfoundland is. What attracted me to this place is when I came here, uh, the neighbor uh, they cleared our driveway when we were not there, and I have never seen such a friendly gesture anywhere. Like I have lived in India, in U.S., and then moved to Canada. so the friendliness and uh the caring nature that people have here just blew me away so i was like if uh, if anybody forgets about humanity this is the place to visit so i nice. definitely encourage all nice. of you to visit nice. this beautiful place nice and um, i'm a lifestyle medicine doctor and uh, here um we have co-founded gift of health which is a not for profit organization and through that we help people to uh, change their lifestyle so where they can lose weight get off medications and reverse their chronic conditions so that's what we help people with that's great so i always ask this question just to know where your roots come from where did you both grow up and who influenced you in your childhood 
So uh, I grew up in India and uh, both my grandparents, like my dad's side, uh, they are farmers. They used to grow cotton and my mom's side, they used to grow rice. So I would say I was born in a typical farmer's uh, family. And my dad was the only person who got education, uh, like being born in a rural place. So he, he was, and he got into medical school, which is a very hard thing uh, to even to get admission into medical school, but he was not able to do that because my grandfather didn't have funds for him to uh, do the education. So my father always made sure that like uh, we have a comfortable lifestyle, like we have good education. And uh, he used to travel widely. So every two years he used to travel to a different place. So basically every two years I had to change school and learn how to make friends and learn different languages. And uh, I got into medicine uh, with the whole aspect of uh, helping people. I, I just wanted to be like my dad. My dad is the one who inspired me. Like he, uh, he got an award from the president. It's called the Bharat Udyog Ratna, a very prestigious award in India. It's an Indian national award uh, he got for his uh, innovation. So like him, I wanted to, innovate something in the medical field. And uh, he, like, he has been a big inspiration to do my best and uh, uh, serve people. Wow, quite a childhood and journey for you. Nice, impressive. How about you, Arjun? Uh, well, uh, I have, we have a, some, we say sometimes we start off, we have pretty similar stories. Our dads wanted to become doctors but they couldn't, similar to my dad, uh, he wanted to become a doctor, but he couldn't because of lack of resources and money. And as you know, like in India, when we were growing up, typically you either become a, a doctor or an engineer or a failure. <laughs> 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 so, but anyway, uh, my, around, uh, you know, when I was uh, very young, my dad uh, shared his uh, dream that, you know, he wanted to become a doctor, but he couldn't, but, uh, since that's when it became my dream. I wanted to see him happy and um, he wanted to become a doctor to ease his suffering and help people. And that was my impetus to become a doctor. Wow, nice. So my next question to both of you, but more so to Arjun actually. I saw Arjun's Facebook profile almost a year and a half, two years ago. And I saw his personal transformation, his uh, weight loss, his uh, exercise routine, and being a surgeon, typically it's very uncommon for surgeon to become a lifestyle physician. So Arjun and both of you, please tell us what Arjun, your life uh, health journey, how did it start? And uh, did your life journey itself kind of uh, made you go into lifestyle medicine because you realize how many benefits you yourself have achieved because of healthy lifestyle? Yeah. Uh... It's been, it's been quite remarkable uh, for me, like taking charge of uh, what I eat and uh, you know, simple choices that I make every day. Uh, you know, many people, many of, uh, actually today I got a compliment uh, from a patient, like in clinic, they said, uh, you know, I was, I was in my clinic and the uh, uh, older gentleman, he said, uh, you know, you look like a rolled up candy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, and uh, sometimes patients tell me like, you know, you have, uh, you know, you look so healthy. And I'm like, I look back and see, I, I wasn't, I didn't always feel like this uh, in residency training. Uh, I mean, I, this is about 12 years ago. I was at the heaviest uh, of my, I was the heaviest of my class and I was at the heaviest uh, uh, of my weight. I was 220 pounds, that's 100 kilos. And uh, uh, it was, uh, quite a busy, uh, stressful lifestyle. And uh, during that time, uh, I, all that uh, extra weight and stress, I didn't know how to handle it. And you know, we almost lost each other, our relationship uh, almost lost each other because I, I, I didn't know ways to, how to cope with stress. Fortunately, you know, a series of things happened where 
uh, I learned about plant-based eating. I learned about how to take charge of my own emotions and uh, not let others control, you know, um, my mind. Just taking charge of my food, taking charge of my mind, and uh, eating healthy, exercising with that. Uh, I wasn't looking to lose weight, but the thing is, uh, my mental outlook improved, and my energy improved, and our relationship improved, and I. During that process, I I went from 220 pounds to 150 pounds uh, without focusing much on the weight 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 part. That's one part of it. But what I uh, you know what came out of it is uh, how I also became more effective when I'm speaking with my patients. It's uh, uh, I think it's it's the they see. Uh, like a living example rather than somebody telling them this is what you should do you have a living example and uh, then uh, something uh, i think you i've shared this with you dr jay i think it would be um about uh, my dad like he he was the one who inspired me to become a doctor but uh, most of his life he struggled with his uh, uh, health like he had diabetes high blood pressure high cholesterol and which you know is a recipe for heart disease like you know better than anyone five years ago his star is a health started failing and he had an angiogram which showed 90% blockages in two out of the three main blood vessels that supply the heart one cardiologist said he needs stents and another cardiologist said he needs a, a bypass surgery and uh, these are pretty risky procedures right when he shared the news of his heart vessels being blocked i felt as though uh, mine had been broken i asked him instead of having your chest cut open why don't you open your mouth and put different foods and he thought uh, i was crazy but uh, he decided to give it a try uh, in two weeks uh, he walked long distances with no shots of breath in three months he came off of uh, diabetes medications blood pressure medications cholesterol medications and uh, he it's been more than 5 years he's quite active on facebook like i think uh, if he sees you he'll be more inspired to do more like <laughs> yeah uh, no stents no bypass surgery and then uh, you know when all these things happened with me with my family and shobha comes from a research background she has such a passion to help people uh, to uh you know to avoid these chronic conditions and help people how simple things simple like this this thing this seems so simple like what we eat and uh, how we take care of our mind but uh, we don't realize how profound these are to impact our health and we started uh, sharing everything that we have learned uh in based on research in our experience uh we put our passion and time into it and then uh, the gift of health uh, came in well wow, that's very impressive i mean i'm always impressed by the way your father completely transform i mean many times some of this chronic disease at that age is very hard to regress because you know physically you may not be able to do that much you know you have certain ingrained habits sometimes you know certain kind of food is not available but i think with your guidance and again that speaks uh, very high because uh, many times we can change millions of people but it's hard to change our parents and hard to change some of our family members and if you can change him i think you can change the whole world so i'm very very impressed <laughs> let me ask you a important question which you already partly said when we talk about healthy lifestyle what we eat is the most important pillar so please both of you take few minutes to explain what kind of food we as american and we definitely as indian and as a world people we should be eating it's, it's okay, okay you yeah, can go yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know there are several ways to go about this uh, and uh, one is uh, simple foods whole foods that are grown in the nature and close to the way the mother nature made them so we talk about uh, you know uh, whole foods plant based way of eating so we talking about uh, uh, whole grains uh, beans fruits vegetables nuts seeds herbs spices mix all of these and make 
whatever you want to make soups and stews and stir fries and sweets and snacks pizzas burgers but make from these ingredients the more whole foods we eat uh, the the healthier we are we have looked at the uh, evidence uh, in nutrition like we went through over uh, 1000 uh, scientific papers when we first discovered this plant based nutrition was uh, uh, from uh, the work of dr carl wellesselstein and he shows that just by putting people on a plant based diet people with severe heart disease with clogged blood vessels uh, heart blood vessels who were told by their cardiologists there is not much they can be done he put them on a plant based diet and with this whole food plant based way of eating these clogged blood vessels opened up and from that uh, uh, paper dr calvel assistant study we uh, we looked at so much uh, um, we followed the work of dr mcdougal dr colin campbell dr neil barnard dr joel fuerman uh, dr michael greger in fact uh, one of my favorite book is uh, how not to die and how not to diet by dr michael greger more than 5000 scientific studies so this is a very very science based evidence based simple approach and um, the thing is uh, sometimes when we present it this way i find the people uh, still find challenging okay you know i hear uh, different kinds of uh, diets and opinions about foods how do i cut through the confusion so we say you know you you can't determine by just looking at one paper you have to look at the whole balance of evidence and where is it pointing to and it is beyond doubt the more whole foods we eat the more plant based we eat the healthier we are yeah um what i would add to this is we were not eating like this before so it was a typical american diet or a typical indian diet like if you look at indian diet like most people think like it is rich in vegetables fruits so it uh, it is a healthy diet but what i found is it was lot processed in the sense uh, if you take oil for example for any indian cooking the starting point is you put the oil and then your cooking starts then <laughs> then comes your vegetables grains or anything else and uh, even the way uh, indian food is cooked uh like it, it is lot more processed and also uh instead of using it as a whole we use in like either it is white rice or I, I, either it is flour based so th- this is what i mostly found and also coming to american diet it's uh, either uh, rich in oil fat sugar so so this this were the things uh, that we were finding but personally what we found is when we got rid of uh, uh, eating processed food our energy levels were up and uh, and even the food that we have suggested to other people one of the things that they say is instantly they notice the change in energy levels they also instantly notice the change in their arthritis or pain level a lot of people say like i had really like bad uh, joints or uh, pain in my joints but when shifting to this diet like my joint pains or like i have seen that the pain or the inflammation has reduced so what i call i what i would call this as an uh, anti inflammatory diet when compared to other, yeah actually uh, if you want to name it i would call it like you know anti obesity diet anti cancer diet anti heart disease diet <laughs> it's uh, you know anti weight loss diet anti diet diet because it's not a diet this is a lifestyle the bottom line is all diets fail <laughs> all diets fail so even uh, sometimes we share like you know if you approach this as a diet you're setting up yourself a failure because uh, as you uh, you know are aware uh, 99% of the people who lose weight go on diet what happens in a couple of years they gain it back only those 1% of the people who uh, go from an inside out approach like the, it's a deeper shift happening but that's the that's the only way to get out of this cycle of dieting 
No, I think that I agree. I think that's an excellent point about what we should eat. I mean, we should be eating whole food, plant-based, no oil or minimal oil. No oil would be best. Minimal animal products or no animal products and lots of uh, fiber, you know, to help our microbiome. So I think uh, this kind of message needs to be keep repeated again and again to thousands and thousands and millions and millions of people. I think the way we eat in America is the reason all this chronic disease and you know, our lifespan last three years has been going down. So my next question is, in terms of our second important pillar, physical activity, I heard from Arjun before that when you apply your program, you ask people to gradually add into the other pillars instead of just starting all the pillars at the same time. So when it comes to physical activity, how much physical activity do you recommend? What type of physical activity do you recommend? And do you start as a physical activity as right away as you start the diet or you give a few weeks for people to digest the diet part and then start the physical activity? Before we actually suggest the physical activity, we clear a very, very important confusion or a myth about exercise. Uh, many people like this, this was done on research studies when people were asked what is more important? Is it the food or is it the exercise? Are, are they both equally important? Many people to, to lose weight to lose weight or stay healthy. Many people think it's both one to one are equal. But the fact is, uh, you know, even uh, science shows that what we eat is four to five times more important than the exercise. When it comes to weight loss, chronic uh, disease reversal, Yes, exercise is important, but uh, it's uh, no matter how much you can run, uh, it's hard to outrun the, the bad eating, poor eating. So we start with that premise. Yes, you know, start with the food, get that food under control. And uh, usually when we are asking people to change their food habits, it's not so easy. Uh, so we give, uh, you know, yeah, some time. It's, it's a lot. I mean, people might be thinking maybe changing food habits is easy, but it's, it's a lot. So if you ask people to change too many things, so if you ask them to eat better, exercise, and on top of that, like if you add other things, it is too overwhelming and they may not do it or start it in the first place. But when you just chunk it down, you just say, okay, first let us uh, take handle on this. First, let us uh, change our eating habits. And once they have, uh, they have done that, what they found is because of the energy boost, they themselves feel like exercising. Now, what do I do with this newfound energy? So people who were unable to walk, start walking. People who were uh, unable, to, unable to walk, start running. So they themselves, uh, were getting engaged in activities and slowly uh, increasing their activities. So as, as you said, so first we suggested make the diet changes and, and then the exercise. I just I want to they, add in like when it comes to exercise, we start, we, we suggest them, it doesn't have to be back breaking in the gym, even like walking, just 20 to 30 minutes of brisk walking is, is, is better than any uh, exercise. And start with that, and then build on to go up to like 45 to, uh, if it if it time if you have time permits, go up to 90 minutes because science shows up to 45 to 90 minutes of daily exercise it has uh, significant benefits in a many uh, mentally, physically, emotionally, so many benefits. No, I think uh, what I like about both of you is that you know when we take our lifestyle medicine uh, boards and training we are asked that we should be coach as much as physicians. And I think you both actually uh, are not only just good physicians, but good coach, because many coach actually are good at not overwhelming their clients. Physicians are famous for overwhelming their client, including adding too many things at the same time, adding too many medications, adding too many things to do in life. So I think I admire both of you to be as good of a coach as much as physicians, because that's what I think we need people who will be good coach because without good coach, uh, physicians cannot do anything. So that's very admirable. So my next question to you is that uh, when it comes to the next pillar, the sleep, please tell us the role of sleep when you put all this healthy lifestyle together. Not a lot of people know about sleep or understand the importance of sleep. Big sleep is, I, I would say, a major part of uh, chronic disease, like why we see 
so much uh, chronic disease around. And uh, I, I mean, sleep is a, is a topic in itself. Uh, but most important thing, what I would say is sleep is a discipline. Uh, which has to be inculcated. It's, it's very easy unless we put a discipline to it. It's, it's very hard to uh, maintain or get the sufficient amount of sleep. So uh, just to add to that, um, you know, everyone is different when it comes to sleep. Some of us know we can function well with six to seven hours of sleep. Some of us need eight to nine hours of sleep. So I think we have to know uh, where, what is the optimum for us. But if you have to put average, I would say it's between six to eight hours. And the thing is, um, we have seen people who switched to standard American diet, standard Newfoundland, standard Canadian diet to uh, whole food plant-based way of eating. Uh, the quality of sleep without even trying, it, it goes up because the body uh, is, uh, is functioning on a better fuel. So uh, the quality of sleep is deep. And uh, the other thing is um, having a, a little bit of routine, like we can call it like a discipline, seems like a big word for many people, <laughs> or you can just call it as a sleep hygiene, right? Uh, we, especially for us right now in the uh, age of electronics, we are going to bed with, cell phones and iPads and you know uh, TV. So just disconnect from this, this media for at least uh, uh, an hour and a half to two hours before your sleep time. And that will just do wonders, uh, changing your diet and exercise. When you add in exercise, uh, you know, sometimes people, many people, we hear this complaint, I can't sleep. Then the first question I will ask is how much activity uh, are you getting, right? Because if the you, your body needs a little bit of activity, at least in an hour or two hours of good physical activity for it to get rest. If, our, if we are sitting uh, and binge watching Netflix and not doing much, and the mind is on the treadmill, the body is on the couch, and it's hard to fall asleep, isn't it? So uh, it's... Uh, it's, it is a, you know, it's a beautiful process, but you got to uh, get these uh, small, small pieces, elements in place. No, I think I agree with you. And I, what I think I like about you, Arjun, when I ask you what time you want to do this live, and you said 6.30 Eastern time. So I think you are very disciplined because you protected that time because you are hour and a half ahead of us. So I think you needed to go to sleep on time. All your followers, all your friends who are on live and who will be watching need to go and sleep on time. So I think uh, not only you preach, but you actually you know follow yourself. So that's a great thing. So my next question to you, which is our next important pillar, is that what is the role of substance abuse and alcohol? Substance abuse and alcohol. Uh, the thing is, uh, first of all, uh, we have to ask. We we the way we work with the uh, you know our uh, clients or patients. Uh, uh, so I, as we said, we are working in the hospital setting as a surgeon. I, I'm doing that. Then we are coaching people in a in a group format. So you mentioned uh, one thing about uh, you know how we are bringing the coaching part. Uh, Dr. Shah, like it's, as you know, it's so hard to uh, put all these things, the seeds for this in a clinic setting one-on-one -on -one in those 10 minute appointments, right? So that also uh, limits our ability, like physicians, our ability as physicians to, we want to give all of this, but we don't have too much time. So one, one way we became better doctors and better coaches is because in this, we do like a three-day program or a six-week programs where we are spending so much time with the small groups. So we get to know each other and like we, uh, we know exactly among these six pillars that you're talking about, what is the area that people need to work on? So then we can coach them according to that. So when we are not limited by the time con constraint, we relax more and the and our clients or patients relax more. So I wanted to add that before I 
because sometimes when the, our listener uh, listeners are listening to all of this oh this all sounds nice but how do i do all this right because just information alone can plant the seed but you got a uh, the habits are hard to change right yeah and uh, about substance abuse what i would say is we go for the substances to calm our mind so i whether we go for uh, alcohol or whether we go for smoking or or what or any other substance uh, that we are trying if you look at the goal behind it is to calm our mind or find pleasure but when we find ways how to find pleasure within ourselves then you wouldn't need the substances so teaching people or bringing awareness to the people that there are ways how you can uh, calm your mind or how you can uh, be in that pleasurable state really helps them to uh, understand and also avoid the substances so not only uh, training or coaching them to avoid substances but it's also important what are they replacing with so when we give them that it becomes very easy for them to give give away whatever they were addicted to that's an excellent point you are making i think many people like you said are so much addicted to their substance like smoking particularly a lot of my patients says that if i give up cigarettes what is my what is left with me i mean cigarette is like my friend like they only all of us says that i have 10 friends or 20 friends in this uh, uh, cigarette case and if i if i quit them then who is going to be my friend so we need to add something which is more positive and more healthy when we take any substance away so that brings to the next important topic which i want you to take your time to explain as i understand you both are meditation instructor yoga instructor you both practice i have heard shobha practicing 2 hours every morning so we will talk about that also so please tell us that how do you coach people when it comes down to the stress management with various techniques eastern and western any other technique for that sake uh, to manage the stress is it okay if i start? yeah, ahead, yeah. yeah. so uh, the reason we teach is because this had actually transformed our lives so as you said in the beginning you see us smiling we were not like this before ajay <laughs> you would see stress in our face and uh, like like so, so much thing has uh, gone like when when we look in our past so i i always used to think that stress is something outside there it is because of my job it is because of my relationships that i'm having or it is because of people but what i learned is stress is something that is created in our minds but it is not because of the external situations and that actually changed my whole outlook of uh, how to manage stress and the other very important aspect that i learned was each one of us we want to be kind we want to be that compassionate person we want to be that gentle person but why are we not able to be kind all the time why are we not able to be loving all the time it's it's because of the stress it's because of the stress we are not able to bring our nice qualities even though like we have our innate need to be nice we are not able to do that because of our stress because of our emotions and 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 our mind and when we learn how to manage our mind that's when we are able to exhibit this qualities more and more that was a very big lesson in my life and that's that's what actually uh, prompted me to actually learn about stress management uh, like my relationships were heavier and uh, things were not uh, going like as i wanted but when i learned to manage my mind so when and and everything fell into place so that's why we actually promote so much that's why we want to bring awareness to people like you are all nice people but the reason you're not able to show that your inner self is because of the stress and once you learn how to manage stress oh boy you you shine through yeah so just uh, uh, to add to that uh, shobha already mentioned stress is something that is not because of external 
it is something because of internal like it is something that is generated in our mind and uh, the way to uh, what we have learned to overcome it is to have a good understanding of our mind now we have we had so much education about math and science and physics and you know chemistry and all of that but we don't get a whole lot of education about the mind so once you learn like even simple things like uh, how our mind is always like uh, i can ask the listeners like you know do you think you're here are you here <laughs> yes you're physically here but where is your mind are you thinking about what i'm going to say next or are you thinking about what are you going to eat for breakfast tomorrow or something that so either if you see our mind is always going to the the past the past or the future it's this constant uh, like running of the mind to the past and future like a treadmill the mind is always on the treadmill between these two and what we miss out is this moment and this is where our life is happening this is where happiness is this is where is joy is everything so once we learn how to uh, just uh, gather our mind and uh, learn to be here that's one aspect the other aspect is uh, as simple as you know we have in a day about from 12000 to 60000 thoughts in a day per day and out of those 80% do you think they are positive or negative 80% of them are negative so our mind has a tendency to to hang on to the negative thoughts but now we don't know this and other thing is 95% of our thoughts whatever you think you think you're thinking it's just repetitive 95% there is nothing new <laughs> <laughs> so so the summary is 95% of the time you're just ruminating on the negative thoughts and you're missing out on life so are you living in head are you living in your uh, head or are you living the life so these kind of things like just having a deeper understanding then uh, from there we learn some techniques right we also learned a other thing about the mind the mind doesn't listen so if you tell your mind don't have the negative thoughts do you think it's going to listen no <laughs> so learning about this tendencies of the mind and overcoming them was a huge thing and this is what actually we teach in a course as well in in the stress management course uh, which which really i mean it was first hand experience for us and and that's what like we share with people too so what we found is like when people go through our uh, uh, eating food program their physical health is improving then you know they have more energy and then then we bring in this component of like you know teaching them how to be with themselves how to be happy uh because and, it is and, a, it is and, a, it is an art art of uh, happiness art of living yeah no i think one thing i'll tell you i think there are about now uh, as i understand about 1200 lifestyle physician board certified lifestyle physicians but my my 100% guess is that out of 1200 certified lifestyle physicians probably not more than 10 who are instructor into an important pillar of stress management probably not even five and you two are two of them so i think that's a that speaks very highly of the program you are you are administering and you are providing so my next question to you which is also another important pillar and i think your relationship between the arjun and chopa between you two speaks for it then what is the role of a healthy relationship in life as a life partners uh, as parents as kids as brothers as sisters as friends as community members what do you think how important the relationship pillar is when it comes down to healthy lifestyle like relationship is very important it takes a toll like needless to say like uh, if we ask people what is that uh, it takes most of the time it's is the relationship if the relationships are bad your mental energy is just gone trying to either it's a communication barrier or or just trying to settle that relationship on the other on the flip side when you have a understanding and a beautiful relationship you are actually able to do more ra rather than trying to focus on trying to repair that relationships you are actually able to do more things uh that's that's what i found and the other thing 
what I would say about relationships, whenever we are in relationship, we always think, what can the other person give me? It's the same with wife and husband or any partners. We, we always look for what is that that person can do for me. The biggest lesson I learned in my life is go into a relationship where you can give because when you give, you actually get tenfold more. So when you are in that space of giving, things automatically come to you. That, that came, uh, I would say that didn't come very easily to me. It was a very hard earned lesson <laughs> because uh, I was going through a lot of trouble with my relationships. Like we, we had our own uh, trials and tribulations, I would say, but uh, it was a very big learning experience for, for us. I would, uh, you know, uh, that was beautiful. Like I was, I would add two couple of things to, uh, one is uh, if you want to have a healthy relationship with anyone, uh, you have to have healthy relationship with yourself because we, don't, we have a relationship with our mind and we have a relationship with our body. Whatever the relationship we have with our mind, when I say mind, that's the mind is the thoughts and emotions and our body, whatever the relationship that we have with our own thoughts and emotions and with our body, that is what we project outside into the world. When you fix that relationship, when you learn how to be centered within yourself, peaceful and calm, you take charge of, uh, of your emotions. Like one thing we, as I said in the beginning, we almost lost our relationship, but what really helped me was taking 100% control of 100% responsibility of my emotion. Like whatever is happening within me is my shit. I have to deal with it. Like if I'm angry, I can't blame on you. Like, you know, I'm getting angry. That means it is happening within me. I have to learn to reset myself, right? So that was a big uh, cha game changer, like taking responsibility for my feelings and emotions and learning how to reset them in a healthy ways, cope with them in a healthy ways. Uh, and uh, keeping compassion as the basis of relationship. Because we think, uh, I, I had this miscon misconception too, like a uh, relationship means the other person has to make me happy. But that was the biggest trap that you can set yourself. Like if uh, uh, once the compassion, like where that uh, desire to, uh, you know, be kind, desire to make sure that the other person is not in trouble, the other person is not suffering, then naturally that will come back to you. So uh, those two things I would say, you know, compassion as the base of relationship and the taking responsibility for emotions. Uh, and, and I can go on on this next. <laughs> no, I think, uh, I, think I, I, I must say that uh, I've listened to many people talk about the six pillars, but from you two, I heard the six pillars in a much more Eastern and Western combination. A lot of the lifestyle physicians push the six pillars as if it's mostly from the Western philosophy, Western point. But I think you are combining East and West, which actually makes the six pillars more shiny. Plus, you two yourself are following those six pillars and you actually have ability and uh, uh, wisdom and the knowledge and uh, capacity to actually administer these six pillars to other people as a coach. So I think uh, it's a rare combination to find what you two have, uh, what I see right now. So let's go over through what you do every day. Uh, tell us about your program, uh, how people can reach out to that program. Is it online? Do they have to come and stay there? Or how much do they have to pay? And uh, you know, what other things they need to know before they sign up with you? So we have uh, uh, an online program it's called a gift of health experience because we, we developed an experience-based program. It's not just information. We're putting them through an experience. Like when they learn these skills that they have this experience of you know, having the high energy, decreasing uh, uh, inflammation and uh, having more health. So it's an experience program, uh, experience-based program. Six weeks, they learn, people learn how to uh, first of all, we clear the confusion about what is healthy to eat. And then um, with that, and they learn, people also learn a much more 
about their own system, the body and the mind. We teach it from both aspects, from the conventional Western aspect and also the old uh, wisdom of the Eastern aspect. So learning about the body and mind is a game changer for any habit you want to create. So once that we establish that, then we uh, actually uh, show them live from our uh, kitchen and living room, how to cook, how to shop. Uh, we show them over uh, uh, 60 different recipes, how to cook and shop and all done in an online platform. We are meeting people on Skype, uh, Zoom, like twice a week for six weeks. And everybody who is doing the program, these are all in a, a, a surrounded by a community of like-minded people. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a beautiful experience. And we have had, uh, um, so this, is, this happened during uh, COVID time, but before COVID time, we were doing three-day in-person workshops, uh, which we are not doing them now. Uh, due to many reasons, but uh, so many remarkable transformations happened when uh, people went through this. We had over 400 people. In fact, people from uh, Los Angeles, Chicago, Florida, they came to Buren, uh, this small little town to do the workshop. Yeah, so we, we had people all over. The other interesting uh, part of the program- Just, just one second. Yeah. No, so <laughs> <laughs> we are we are in discussion with our teenage. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to make some sounds on the side. We are like, please wait for two minutes. <laughs> so this is a uh, think about being uh, you know uh, here and uh, playing multiple roles at the same time. Yes. <laughs> so this is. Uh, this is real life, yes. So coming back to the uh, the workshops, right, and the and the courses. Uh. Yeah. So what I was saying is, of course, you would find a lot of online courses out there. The way uh, this is different is we we are experiencing it. So we are providing an experience, and uh, people who have done this course have experience because it's. Uh, we also have a membership site where this course is delivered and this course is like a fun playing like a fun game where you get points for for doing so uh, when you develop the skills of cooking or when you uh, develop the skills of uh, losing weight and oh yeah for every percentage of uh, body weight loss you get points so it's like we go by not by number of pounds we go by percentage body weight we go by percentage reduction in me medication. So everything, it's like a gamifying. We're gamifying an experience, so. And, and that's what people love. I mean, like, it's very exciting. I mean, they're literally hooked on and they want to achieve those goals and, and get the points and, and celebrate their wins. Yeah. No, I think uh, that's, a, that's a remarkable program you've set up because, uh, you know, it's one thing to practice lifestyle medicine on one on one, and then it's a different thing to, you know, administer online program to a mass, to a to a large large group, not just from Canada, from internationally. So I think that that's a very very commendable job you have done. I'm sure it has taken a lot of uh, hours of your time, a lot of uh, thinking, a lot of planning. I'm sure you know some of the time came from instead of giving it to your son and your family, you gave it to the people who are benefiting this from this program. So. That uh, is uh, very, very commendable. My next question to both of you is that, or maybe whoever can describe, one of you can describe, please tell us a one life transformation of one of your uh, member from your program where you distinctly remember, you know, how totally, totally they changed. I, I listened to your, one of a person in our group talk, but I want our listener, our followers to also listen how transformative your program could be. So uh, here is a uh, Jim, he came to our workshop, like uh, he was on the sidelines for a long time. Uh, he was one of those we call, um, uh, for, he belongs to the batch of kicking and screaming because his wife was kicking and screaming that he needs to do the workshop. Finally, he said, okay, I'll do the workshop. Uh, when he came, he had barely uh, 
energy to come from uh, the parking lot into the lecture hall because of a lot of arthritis. And uh, first day, uh, you know, he got to taste 15 different plant-based foods and uh, he liked them. And uh, next day morning, when he woke up, he saw, he noticed that his blood sugar numbers uh, went from, I'm saying that in the Canadian numbers, like from 20 to uh, six. And he was like over the moon. He said in 10 years, he have never seen his blood sugar numbers in such a, in uh, in a normal, in a in normal in range. In single digits. Yeah. Like so in those three days with the, in our live workshop, he uh, was walking with no pain and his blood sugars went from, uh, stayed the uh, same. And he, his acid reflux was gone and his arthritis improved by 50%. That's just in three days. I'll, I'll fast forward, like, you know, in three months, he came off of 80% of his medications. He was on uh, insulin for diabetes. He was on blood pressure medications, cholesterol medications, uh, arthritis medications. And he, was, uh, he came off of 80% of his medications. Six months, uh, he had to change his whole wardrobe, uh, give away 50 of his favorite uh, pants and shirts. Uh, he has uh, happy problems to you know, right. shop and he completely, uh, you know, uh, got a new lease on life. Uh, he is able to walk, uh, he was able to walk like 10 kilometers with no, no problems. And this is one of the, you know, uh, many stories that we had. And the thing is this happened in an in-person, but we were able to get similar results, even in the online. Like when we, when we started doing the online, we were like, oh man, we, we don't know whether we're gonna get the similar results online or not. Because in person, the people get to taste the food, right? But here we are showing them how to cook. But to our surprise, we got similar results uh, for people like in the last group that we finished, there was a physician who uh, heard about a program and joined. He was on medications for uh, uh, high blood pressure and diabetes for over 20 years. In the first week, he had to drop his uh, blood pressure medications because his blood pressure numbers were plummeting as his body was healing so fast. And his diabetes medications, he had he cut down by 50% in the, in the first six weeks. So this is someone who just went through our uh, recent online course. No, I think, uh, I, I think I agree with you. I think I've seen a similar kind of results. And many times, a lot of people, you know, because of this uh, keto fair and keto crazy, craziness that people think that keto makes you lose weight very quickly, but you may lose weight very quickly for the first few weeks, but you actually take a lot of dangers, a lot of the, you know, increasing cholesterol, even heart attacks and other things. While this whole food plant-based diet with no oil actually can give you exactly same rapid weight loss. People don't realize that because people have not tried that. And it's not been, you know, strongly uh, kind of prop propagated in our society. The whole food plant-based no oil can be as strong as keto diet in terms of weight loss, plus all the health benefits, including inflammation, diabetes, high blood pressure, you know, erectile dysfunction, you know, exercise mood, sleep, everything else comes as a bonus. So I think I agree with you. I think uh, your success can be duplicated online, partly because you have put the method where it can be done by anybody. And I think to be honest with you, I think uh, uh, not many programs uh, provide this kind of consistency between uh, online program and in-person program. So that really is very commendable. So let me ask you last question. What is your message to our followers, to our listeners? A lot of people who will be watching this thing on YouTube. What is your message? How one, one can start a healthy lifestyle and what kind of uh, results they look forward to within three to six months? Within three to six <laughs> months, you can totally transform your life. <laughs> you know, three to six months is a huge time frame, especially if you have a, a, like a, a coach and a, a group, a support. Uh, see, what we found, uh, Dr. Shah, is for people to succeed like this, it's not just the information, but they have to learn the skills. Like, so investing time to learn the skills. And I think before we start this conversation, you mentioned something very beautiful. Uh, you can do anything when you put your heart, mind, and time into it. So uh, 
coming from that approach, like, you know, learning the skills and then having the right support, because sometimes it's not just the information and the skill, but if you don't have the right environment and support, it could be challenging. So, yeah. So what I would say is if, if you want to fast track your results, uh, it's always better to immerse yourself in, in a immersion based program where you're learning about like uh, what to eat at the same time you're learning the skills and also getting the support when you do that it, it actually like exponentially uh, you are in a fast track otherwise if when you try to do it on your own it's not that it cannot be done on your own it it would take a lot of time doing the same thing like what you could have achieved in weeks it might take months or years for you to achieve the same thing uh, when it comes to changing uh, food habits or uh, a healthy lifestyle people think okay just tell me what do i need to do give me the meal plan give me the recipes and uh, uh, I, i'll just go ahead and do it one thing what people don't realize is to bring a change it's not only the knowledge that you need, it's not only the skills that you need, you need the support, you need these three ingredients. Even if one of the ingredient is missing, it's difficult to sustain the change for long run. So for the listeners, I, I would say to bring a change, incorporate these three things, like get the knowledge, get the skills, get the support, and you, and you would be off to a good start and uh, you would be able to maintain the change. Yeah, that's, a, that's an excellent point. I think uh, we need knowledge, we need skills, and then we need support. I think, and it applies to not just with healthy lifestyle, I think it applies to raising kids, you know, going to college, going to medical school, everything requires all three of it. So I think, uh, to be honest with you, I think this was one of the most beautiful six pillars, you know, I've heard from, you know, in the last two years since I've been doing lifestyle medicine. So I thank you for coming. We definitely will look up, we'll look out for a, a gift of life experience program online. Yeah, gift of health, Dr. Shah. A gift, gift of health, gift of health experience program. Hopefully many of our listeners, followers will reach out to you. But uh, uh, let me conclude by saying that if you like uh, today's uh, live, please share on your page. Uh, this will be on YouTube in a few hours. So watch it on YouTube if you want to watch it a few, few more times. Uh, also share YouTube videos with your friends. Also invite 25 friends as often as you can to, in, to our page. We are growing rapidly. We post every day, four to five times a day, everything about healthy living, everything about how to succeed in life. So if you like our page, if you like what we are providing, please go ahead and uh, share our page with your friends and family also. So again, Dr. Rai Budis, Arjun and Soba, thank you very much. I wish you the best and we will be bringing you back probably every three to six months. So thank you again. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much thank for having so much. us. <laughs> Thank you. And